everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting the brand new Osgiliath Ruins as part of the Battle of Osgiliath Lord of the Rings core box, sent to me early by Games Workshop to preview, build, paint, and possibly play for all of you, and massive thank you to them for doing that because I'm so excited. So, so excited. I love these ruins. I think they're fantastic. I think they look amazing. And, well, we're gonna jump in and we're gonna start painting them. They've all been primed in gray sear. And I suspect what we're gonna do is we're gonna mostly focus on this one because it's a good medium size, but we're gonna be painting up all four of these. So if there is anything that comes up that is individual enough, for example, this door just here, we will cut to one of those, but we've got a door just here. In fact, we're probably just going to focus on this one, but we are going to be painting up all four. You'll be able to use this technique to paint all of your Osgiliath ruins, regardless of size and stipulation. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is we're going to put the camera in the mount, we're going to grab our paints, we're going to grab our brushes, and then we're going to get started. So the place we're going to start with our Osgiliath ruins is, well, on all of the brickwork. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind when you're doing this. You want to find a comfortable place to hold it. Now, this will mean that you won't be able to paint it because, well, we have no base or anything. Now, you could mount this on something and then paint it that way, but we're not going to be doing that, no. What we're going to be doing is we're just going to be holding it by the floor here because that gives us a really good handle, and then we can paint all of the walls, and then once that's dry, we can stop holding that bit and we can paint the floor tiles. Now the color we're gonna be using first is Null Oil. And we're just gonna be applying this straight over the top of our primer, of our Grace here primer. And what we're looking for here is a fairly smooth coat. So we're gonna pick a large brush and I've got a monster brush here from the Army Painter I'm gonna be doing this with. And we're just gonna start applying this like this over the top of all of the brickwork. And it doesn't matter if you get this on any of the wood, because we're going to be covering that over with a much darker contrast paint, but we're just going to be going like this, quite methodically, across the whole of the ruin. With the null oil. This is the new reformulated stuff. Just to bear that in mind, as this stuff basically acts like a contrast paint anyway. As you can see, we can just go quite quickly with it, using big broad brush strokes and just working it into all of those areas. You can mop up any excess, move it around, much like you can with a normal contrast paint. So the null oil is applied to all of the walls, as you can see it's still drying on this side. We haven't done the floor yet though, 
And the reason for that is because I wanted to show you, as this is going to be slightly tricky, as there's a lot less recess and we've got much larger areas. So what you want to do here is you just want to be a little bit careful with the null oil. You don't want to overload your brush too much. And you want to start right in here with those recesses. You just want to very carefully now start effectively wiping your brush over the top. Now, if you want to go a little bit faster, you can use this circular motion to get it on there quite quickly. However, what you might notice is you'll get a few more kind of extra brush strokes that you perhaps weren't intending. However, it does tend to dry out in such a way that's a lot less noticeable. like that sort of thing. However, if it is a br bit brush strokey, it's gonna be all right. We are going to be doing some dry brushing. That's going to sort it right out. So with that null oil all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some seraphim sepia and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the stone. However, this doesn't need to be a perfect coat. So we're just gonna take a good dollop of this from our, from our pot, and we're just gonna start applying this over the top of all the stone. Now, when I say it doesn't need to be perfect, we're literally looking just to add kind of, not really patches, we kind of wanna darken the whole thing down, but we don't need to make sure we get it into every single nook and cranny, as this is gonna just create a nice little bit of variation on the model. This is also going to give us that slightly grubbier look. You can see it's already doing so. And it might look a little bit yellow at first, but this is why we're doing sort of small amounts at a time. Because it dries a lot darker than you perhaps are anticipating right now. As you can see there, very kind of yellowy, very bright kind of brown, but once we just kind of move it around. You don't want any of those kind of very bright kind of spots. That's not what we're after. As you can see in a matter of one minute, we've already got a pretty good coverage here. We're just gonna keep going. You wanna do this all over. Like I said, this does not, absolutely does not need to be a perfect coat. So with that seraphim sepia all applied to all of the stonework, as you can see all over, it dries that bit darker, looks very nice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add our final shade, and this is gonna be Athonian camo shade. And what we're gonna do here is just around the bottom of the base of the building, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab a little amount of it on our brush, and then we're just gonna stipple it across the bottom. So we're just gonna Apply this like that, fairly roughly.
just like that. Varying degrees of height and consistency. A little bit more to do around on this side. side as well. shades applied what we're now going to do is we're going to brighten this thing right back up and we're going to do this by adding a dry brush or two and the first one we're going to add is some gray sear and what we're going to do here is we're going to dry brush in a circular motion going clockwise followed by anti-clockwise over the top of all of our stonework With that gray sear dry brush all applied, as you can see, those ruins have really brightened up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our final dry brush, and this is gonna be some pallid witch flesh. Now what we're gonna do is, we're, rather than doing it in that circular motions, we're just gonna come at it from a top down, like this. And we're just gonna bring it down, just catching the edges. So with that done, all of our stonework is now finished. And it looks fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to our last two details and that is gonna be this wooden door as well as the wooden stuff here, the beams and things. And we've got a little bit of metal banding around the door as well. So the color we're gonna be using first is Saigor Brown. I'm gonna be applying this over the top of all of our wood. So with that Saigor Brown applied to that door inside and to all of the struts and beams and things up here and here, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors. I'm going to apply this 
over the top of the banding on the door. And so with that done, just to finish off the whole building, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some null oil. We're just gonna apply this all over the top of the door. And so with that final shade applied to the door, our Gondorian ruins, as they are officially known, but ruins of Osgiliath, are now finished. And I think they look fantastic. I am really looking forward to when these come out as a multi-part kit, or individually on their own kit, because I'm possibly going to pick up three or four and just build some massive Gondorian buildings. I just, oh, this was so much fun. It was so quick to do as well. It was just unbelievably fun. I really like this box. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further, like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.